This episode is brought to you by Kia's first three-row all-electric SUV. The Kia EV9. With available all-wheel drive and seating for up to seven adults. With a zero to 60 speed that thrills you one minute. And available reclining lounge seats that unwind you the next. Visit kia.com slash EV9 to learn more. Ask your Kia dealer for availability. No system, no matter how advanced, can compensate for all driver error and or driving conditions. Always drive safely. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast, where your source for personal, professional, and organizational growth and development, where we share original research, explore industry trends, and interview executives and thought leaders from across the globe. We hope you join us often for practitioner-oriented content around all things related to leadership, HR, talent management, organizational development, and change management. Maximize your personal and organizational potential with Human Capital Innovations Podcast. you enjoy the Human Capital Innovations Podcast, enjoy ad-free listening by going to the Patreon page, and please consider contributing even at the producer or sponsorship level. And please leave a review. Thank you for your support. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. In this HCI podcast episode, I talk with John Schneider and Harini Shriharan about modernizing performance management. John Schneider and Harini Sriharan, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Thank you very much. Thank you. Glad to be here. It is a pleasure to be with both of you. You're joining us from different parts of California, northern and southern. I'm south of Salt Lake City in Utah. And today we're going to be talking about modernizing performance management and some better work systems uh, that help you to do that. So I'm super excited to explore this with both of you as we get started. I wanted to share your bios with everybody. John brings Better Work's vast experience and a proven track record of leading large scale business transformations for growth and position in the marketplace. Prior to joining Better Works, he was vice president of platform and solutions marketing at IntApp. In this role, he was responsible for evolving product positioning to platform-based solutions that drove increased value for customers, expanded the business into new markets, and led to successful acquisitions of adjacent technologies to fulfill InTapp's position as the market leader. His work at InTapp directly contributed to accelerated revenue growth, which ultimately resulted in a $1 billion plus IPO. Harini is a strategic marketer who is passionate about how companies bring new offerings to market and get them into the hands of customers. As the head of product marketing at BetterWorks, she is responsible for their go-to market strategy, product launches, analyst relations, partnership marketing, and sales enablement. She has a decade of experience as a product marketer with notable companies such as Jive and Intapp where she has supported key company initiatives, such as crafting the company's IPO narrative, leading the go-to-market integration of strategic acquisition, and designing the messaging for a unified platform story across a wide range of products. Uh, Both of you have an amazing background and really fascinating careers. Before we dive on into the conversation more broadly, I'd love to just give both of you a minute to share anything else about yourselves, your background, your personal context, and then we'll dive on in. Great. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you you covered a lot of ground there. I'm the CMO at BetterWorks. I joined the company about 14, 15 months ago after the IPO of Intap. Um, and I was really attracted to the challenge or opportunity, if you will, in the marketplace of helping the workforce evolve performance management. It was a very exciting time in terms of the, you know, the move to hybrid work and some of the new paradigms around future of work concepts that were actually becoming reality very, very fast. And BetterWorks was incredibly positioned to do that. So that's sort of why I ended up here. I'm down in San Diego. I've got three boys, a golden retriever to my left and a wife. So that's about it for me. The specific case is HR leaders and practitioners, and uh, which is why I'm here. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And as we dive on into the conversation, uh, John, if you wouldn't mind just starting us off by telling us a little bit about Better Works and in what you're doing there at Better Works. 
Absolutely. Uh, BetterWorks is really focused on taking that age old process of performance management. And, you know, it's, it's something that you know, it, it, I think we all know completely does not fit in the modern way in which work gets done. And we're reimagining that entire process. Um, we know traditional performance management has you know, epically failed to motivate employees to perform at their best, which at the end of the day is what it's intended to do. And so, you know, we look at that traditional performance review process that's universally seen as, you know, cumbersome, time consuming, ineffective, biased, um, and really disconnected overall from everything it's supposed to do about rewarding and encouraging performance. And we, we really re-engineer that entire process, if you will. Um, and I think, you know, that what, what's so exciting about that is it really strikes to the heart of so many things that what workers really want and have always wanted very human needs of what drives the purpose and the engagement around it. And there's so much demand for that today in terms of what CHROs and HR leaders are, are looking for today. So we're really on a mission um, to really change uh, performance management to a concept called performance enablement, one that's forward looking, that helps coach and develop employees and engage them with their managers in ways that are meaningful and constructive versus punitive and, you know, backwards looking and all the things that have been, you know, again, universally hated top to bottom in the company, even the C-suite hates performance reviews. Um, nobody likes it. So that's what we're, what we're after at BetterWorks. Yeah. Nobody likes it. And it's been that way for a long time. I mean, when, when was it, it was even 12 plus years ago when some of the tech firms, I remember Adobe making the big announcement that they're getting rid of all performance uh, appraisals and and whatnot. And of course, they're not getting rid of performance management. Everyone has to do have coaching and feedback and opportunities to uh, address performance issues, et cetera. But they just, they recognize what we all recognize, that it's not effective. Uh, in fact, in many ways, it it's, can be very problematic, the traditional approaches uh, that might have better. It might have worked a little bit better in a different day and age, but certainly doesn't work now. Um, and we could even debate whether it worked well, you know, 20, 30 years ago. Uh, and so that's been the trend, right? It, it, and increasingly more and more organizations have moved away from the traditional models of performance management systems. And in, in this modern era, in, in the modern world of work, and as things continue to evolve, we need to be able to adapt. And if we can't adapt, uh, we're going to be dinosaurs. We're going to fall behind. Certainly, we're not going to get the best out of our people, um, but we're also going to continue these processes that are time intensive, don't really add a whole lot of value and sometimes make things worse. Yeah, exactly. And I think, uh, you know, Adobe is a great example. They were really headliners uh, in, in, in taking that old process and, you know, not not a, not not continuing with it. And it made a lot of news. And now what we now see is, you know, it's becoming more principled and repeatable and companies, not just Adobe, are, are looking at this and it's more at scale. So then then comes into the question of the technologies like BetterWorks offers to, to enable that and make it repeatable and, you know, easy to perform and such. So there's been a tremendous amount of innovation since, if you would, early uh, company adopters like an Adobe had, you know, kind of pioneered, like, let's just scrap what was and do something different. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot yeah. of reason uh, behind why it doesn't work, right? Um, there are, uh, so our, our own customers, Colgate is a great one. Uh, they're a household name. They've been leaders in the personal care space for a very, very long time. And to maintain this lead requires intense focus and a lot of agility, especially more in the recent times when there's been so much headwind around increased cost of raw material and so many competitors, especially the direct-to-consumer uh, startups. So they've been, uh, they've needed to be this company that was extremely agile, rapidly trades, has these fast decision cycles, and the old way of performance management just doesn't work, right? Because you set goals for the entire year, the way the old performance management works is that you set goals for the entire year, and then you revisit it one year later to see if you've accomplished these goals. And that doesn't work anymore in an environment where your goals keep changing every quarter or maybe even oftener. And so they needed to uh, be a lot more uh, agile. They needed their managers and their employees to have frequent conversations. So everybody was aligned to us responding to all of the new information and the strategy yeah. changes. And so managers could support their employees learning 
new career skills to cater to the new needs of the business and so and and also ensure that there was continued um trust in leadership as leadership was making these changes and that was one of the reason why they chose better works and that's those are that's just one of many use cases why that that illustrate why the age old performance management model doesn't work anymore and why so many companies are yeah. shifting to this new way of uh, approaching performance yeah yeah absolutely now, I, I also saw recently news around Red Thread Research Tech Consortium. I know BetterWorks joined the consortium. Uh, Harini, maybe you can tell us a little bit more about uh, that involvement there and how you envision BetterWorks involvement in the future. Yep. Uh, so we have been big fans of Red Thread even before the tech consortium formed. There's a lot of alignment in terms of the topics that we are focused on as companies. Um, Red Thread uh, focuses its research on what we consider are core objectives of a performance man management solution, a modern performance management solution. So the research agenda includes things, uh, topics such as uh, employee engagement, skill development, continuous upskilling, uh, manager effectiveness, employee experience and culture. And these are the exact kind of outcomes that we hope to bring about through our product. So there's a lot of alignment there. And um, in addition to this, we are also, uh, we as a performance management solution are specifically focused on the needs of the large enterprise, which obviously is very unique in terms of, uh, because of their own unique challenges, right? They are structurally a lot more complex. They have multiple divisions and subsidiaries and they have large distributed workforces and different modes of working. And Red Thread really understands the HR challenges that comes with it. And they specifically address their research to also include uh, an understanding of these challenges, the nuances behind these challenges. So there's a lot of synergy there. Um, and we are uh, we we are hoping that, uh, uh, and we're excited about as a consortium, which includes many reputable members like Workday and Degreed and Vizier, um, we are hoping to come together and not just share our collective wisdom and leverage the research that uh, Red Thread is uh, creating, but also bring up topics that we hear from our customers around what are the most burning issues and questions for them, um, support the research around focusing on these topics that are of uh, most interest to our customers. And we are hoping that the research in turn will inform our product direction. So that's uh, that's our biggest motivation behind uh, the technology. Yeah. Yeah, and, and for listeners who, who may not be aware uh, and familiar with Red, Red Thread Research Tech Consortium, really is a fantastic um, resource. So absolutely check it out, look it up, and and look at the what they're doing and, and the resources that are available. Um, and, and you referred, Harini, to engagement as one of those things that is impacted by the modern performance management approach and some of the stuff that you're doing there at BetterWorks. And maybe we can drill down on that a little bit more and talk um, more about employee engagement and the trends that we see. Now, Gallup has been doing their annual engagement survey for a long time now. Um, the, you know, the percentage of engaged people at work usually hovers around, you know, a third or a little bit more than a third of workers. They actively disengaged tend to be a really a dramatic large number uh, of the workforce, which is really concerning. Uh, tell us a little bit more about uh, some of the, the current trends that you're seeing in, around uh, worker engagement and what a different approach towards performance management, how that might be able to address some of this engagement um, types of issues and challenges that we're seeing. Yeah, that's an excellent question. And it's it's what BetterWorks is aimed at, at, at solving for. Um, you know, it, it seems like Gallup never seems to come out with a score that is satisfactory to businesses in terms of employee engagement, and it and it dropped to thirty two percent this this past year, which is is definitely alarming. Um, which always always implies that the disengagement level, the active disengagement level, is going up too. 
um, which is almost terrifying probably to a CEO. Um, so that that that's a challenge. And I think, you know, the first thing we have to answer about, you know, why is employee engagement such a barometer, you know, and, and why is it so important? And, you know, it, it's a it's a bigger metric. Um, for a long time, employee satisfaction was more just about are you paid well? Are you happy being here? Um, do you like your colleagues and are, how are your benefits? You know, and it was very you know specific, almost like contractual level is your role good, you know, contractual level things. But employee engagement tries to encapsulate the heart of how an employee experiences their work, uh, which in turns to that commitment they'll have and their drive to do their best and perform at their best. And, you know, we we do repeatedly see that even satisfied employees, we, we do an annual study of the workforce. It's a global study. We have over 2000 respondents. And what we found in last year's study was that Even employees that were quitting or planning to quit said they have good feelings about their company. So employee satisfaction wasn't even on the radar of being too problematic, but they were disengaged or they were ready to to, to bolt out the door. And that's that's pretty scary. Um, You know, so why would it be in a free fall? Right. I think first, we all know the workforce is exhausted Um, in a short time. We've gone from the booming economy to one that's now wobbly at best, maybe going into recession. Um, and then, you know, under, you know, and things that are not as much in the control of, uh, you know, not economic as much, but, you know, the, the pandemic from, you know, now there's war and then there's social unrest. There's all these variables that are weighing heavily in the lives of everybody, uh, you, me, everybody. Right. And so we all I think we all know that one has been around um, and it really exhausts the employees, um, you know, and, and, and probably leads to some, you know, concerns there. But, you know, also that point that we made early on, which was, you know, work has fundamentally changed, right? In a few short years, there's been about two decades of future work predictions that have been crammed into those very short windows, remote and hybrid work. We have much more network teams solving problems, which means managers have a completely different role in that environment. Um, The way goals are accomplished in team environments and there's so many other things that we've started to see and realize about that new, you know, the new way in which work is getting done today. Um, and, and, you know, workers, it's not lost on them that they're, you know, that, that this work environment has changed, you know, the butts and seat model no longer, you know, is believable before it was, you know, employers saying you got to sit here 40 hours a week. They're like, wait, for three years, I just navigated my job at home. In fact, I worked more hours and did more. So that renegotiation of the contract is going way beyond the literal terms of, of, of the contract itself of, you know, pay and roll and all that. And, and it really starts to strike at things that better work solves for, you know, how does, how does an employee feel and develop purpose and alignment to the company and that they're accomplishing ambitious goals that are important to the business. That's a very important part of why somebody would be engaged. Um, another one would be, you know, having managers that coach, not looking backwards and, and punitively doing reviews, but actually coach and develop their employees for success. You know, and then and then the overall purpose of the company. They're asking for a company to be more purpose driven, more have a more greater meaning than just the profit motive alone. And so all of that, you know, boils into this need for a connection, connection to people, connection to purpose and meaning in their jobs. And, you know, if we see those more robust uh, engagement environments, um, you know, where, where, you know, workforces are highly motivated, you're going to see that uh, employee alignment um, to goals. You're going to see the transparency. People feel like they understand what they're doing, why they're doing it. And they certainly are probably collaborating and interacting across teams, across space and time boundaries in ways that work for their personal life at the same time are accomplishing things that are very important. Um, The traditional org chart is not how work is getting done in those environments. And so we see all of those things happening around employee engagement today. And and it's a lot for an HR leader to take in and and solve against because it happens so fast. So uh, there's also the manager effectiveness angle to this, right, Uh, which is the linchpin of employee engagement. It's basically managers who make or break what the employee experience is like at uh, a company. And uh, and, and the, the interesting thing is there are so many companies that are growing so rapidly. 
uh, and when they grow so rapidly uh, the uh, and they're in the hyper growth mode what's what's really they're also promoting people at a much rapid uh, pace and what happens is uh, that you uh, there are now um, really high performing uh, ICs uh, uh, individual contributors who are suddenly people managers who are no longer high performing yeah. as people managers only because they've not trained to be uh, high performing people managers uh, so how do you run an effective company uh, how do you make these managers more effective how do you help first time managers help maintain a, the scale of a strong when you scale when you scale your company how do you maintain a strong and innovative culture uh, with first time managers so that's another important topic for us that's really critical to maintaining employee engagement and that's uh, that's that's a pivotal um uh, that's pivotal to what our product does as well yeah, awesome. And maybe in our last few minutes together, we can talk a little bit more specifically about the technological innovations that HR leaders are evaluating right now and trying to figure out how to utilize uh, to modernize performance management. Do you want to take that, Harini? That sounds like a product marketing. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's definitely um, uh, there's definitely um, a people analytics angle to it right which is which is uh, when i think about the technology innovations that are most top of mind for hr leaders the first thing i think about is uh, how do hr leaders become more strategic how do they better support business transformation efforts and the first thing that comes to mind from a technology standpoint that can support that is people analytics so how do they help how do they uh, make better choices about their people and for their people especially in a time when uncertainty and confusion um can just uh, in the in the market itself and how workers are feeling just cloud decision making so things like uh, and people analytics is getting a lot more advanced it can help answer questions that hr has not been able to answer before uh, which in turn supports high level business decision making questions such as um, assessing the value of their training programs uh, what percentage of poor performers are becoming good or better performers within the year because of their development efforts or training programs we know that uh, hr spends so much time and money and effort into learning and development programs but they don't really know if they're effective and people analytics can actually help there another critical area is uh, where people analytics can pay, play a huge role is to eliminate bias in the workplace answering questions such as are minority groups getting the same number of uh, career and coaching conversations as others um, which uh, departments or which locations uh, has the uh, largest gender bias or ethnicity bias. So it can answer these really critical uh, questions. Now, speaking of diversity and inclusion and removing unconscious bias, another big technology area is AI, of course, right? Uh, it uh, Even we have started using AI uh, to detect in real time unconscious bias in peer feedback or manager reviews that are being written uh, and to provide adjustment recommendations. Um, AI is is being used so much more in the man performance management space and I see it being used even more. Like uh, chat GPT is a big topic these days and uh, you can imagine the technology behind chat GPT could help managers write more comprehensive and better performance reviews or help HR or people leaders prepare for like difficult conversations with employees or help employees define their goals better, smart goals, they call it, right? How do you define goals that are most effective and meaningful? Um, so those are the things that come top, come top of mind for me when I think about um, technology. I think I would just add one, one other point is that in order to get the data, um, there's a very important aspect of the innovation that we focus on, and that is, of course, on user experience. And I, I, it kind of just rounds out kind of the opening parts about how much the performance review is universally hated. Well, in a traditional performance review process, there's a system, probably the HCM technology, where you have to go about six, seven, eight clicks down into some application 
that is not the purpose of the HCM, but just a piece of it and fill out a performance, you know, evaluation or put in goals and you don't go back until a year later or half a year later. And then you're sweating because you're like, oh my gosh, I didn't even do that goal. It changed a week later. And so one of the concepts that we really focus is on focus on is the flow of work. And so we we embed better works where people are doing their jobs. That's where engagement happens. If they are engaged and they're leaning in, they're they're doing it when they're writing their goals, you know, discussing and having a conversation with their employees, getting feedback from their colleagues, or getting recognition. And the idea that that's going to be a standalone technology application whereby somebody has to go and go into it and all that does not reflect the way work gets done. And this is the real challenge that the way technology providers have gone after this problem for many years now um, aren't solving for. And a better works in, somebody who uses better works in an employee is likely to log in on average every week. And if you take an HCM with performance management, they log in quarterly, maybe semi-annually, probably, and maybe just annually. Um, weekly says a lot about how frequent they need to involve themselves in that technology to, and to have these levels of engagement. Um, so I think that's a really important part. You don't get the data if people don't use the technology. And that's what is the big fundamental problem. People hate the way it's been deployed to date. Yeah, wonderful. John and Harini, it's been a real pleasure talking with you. I know at the time I need to let you go here in just a minute. Before we wrap things up, I wanted to give you a chance to share with the audience how they can connect with you, find out more about your work, your team, and then give us a final word on the topic for today. Connect with us, uh, betterworks.com. You can always also reach out to me specifically. It's uh, uh, maybe in, in, the, in the podcast uh, title, uh, they must... My, I'm sure my name is included. It's basically my first name dot last name at betterworks.com. Feel free to reach out to me directly as well. In in this era of uh, layoffs and uh, the economy um, hit the the, the, econ- the economic downturn, there's nothing more important. Uh, th- th- there's nothing more important than um, you for companies than using the limited resources that you have putting your heads down, doing focused, effective work to keep the company moving. And that's been, uh, that's that's a big use case for performance management. Performance management was always meant to be uh, a tool to enable companies, enable employees and, their com- and the companies to do better, especially in a time like this. And uh, we are hoping to revamp performance management to be exactly that. Wonderful. John, anything you would like to say as final word? Yeah, I'm easy to find John at better works. And I would add also an advertisement for our thought leadership platform called people fundamentals. Um, There's a webinar on a monthly basis and we bring thought leaders all over the industry to discuss the big relevant topics of the day. We have one in February coming up right now with Josh Burson, for example, and Rivian talking about, um, modern performance management. So anybody who's interested in, in things like this podcast are probably interested in, in hearing these thought leadership topics. I think I close on, you know, just kind of to add to it all. I think, you know, one thing at BetterWorks, we don't like talking about how HR needs to take a seat at the table. We, they have a seat at the table. And I want to, you know, just really urge CHROs and HR leaders to really look at their position from the standpoint of how much CEOs need them to lean in on the strategy and how to operationalize that strategy with the workforce in ways that they probably weren't asked in the past. All of this technology, the hybrid work environment, all these things, there's more at their fingertips to achieve all of this than ever before. It actually should be an exciting time to take on those challenges and be that, that hero to the CEO who's trying to get that workforce agility, develop the resilience needed, especially in a down economy. All of those things are relevant and um, they're needed more than ever. Wonderful. Again, John, Harini, it has been a real pleasure. I encourage the audience to reach out, get connected, find out more about what their team at BetterWorks can do for you. And as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe, that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week. Do you enjoy the Human Capital Innovations Podcast? Enjoy ad-free listening by going to the Patreon page. And please consider contributing even at the producer or sponsorship level. And please leave a review. 
Thank you for your support. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. I hope you stay healthy and safe and that you have a great week.